Did you just did you just touch the back of my head? From here? Something just went to the back of my head. Something just tapped me on the back of the head. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I swear to God, Dwayne. He just tapped me on the back of the head. <laughs> he just went boom like that on the back of my head. I swear to God. Can you do it again, please? Hey folks, how is everybody? Hope you're all well. Um, and I'm happy to have everybody here tonight. Thank you for showing up. Um, I just want to uh, give a thanks to, I got uh, uh, Mike, Barb, um, Leanne and Glenn uh, uh, doing the mod uh, moderating for me tonight. So thank you for that. Keep all the riffraff out. And uh, tonight I have a, a guest, uh, James Brost. Um, I, I've actually done an interview with James before, but it never got posted because the the, the Wi-Fi sucked. But uh, he interviewed me, so actually this time I'm interviewing him. So I'm going to bring him on, and here we go. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm good, my friend. How you doing, Mike? All right, man. Good to have you on here. It's good to see you again. You know, been a while. You know, I, I remember the first time we had a talk there. It was, uh, you know, it was good vibes there. So I appreciate sure. it. Sure. Yeah, talking to you. Likewise. So, um, so obviously we're uh, you know we're we're here to speak about the subject of Sasquatch, and um, you uh, have been into this for I'm not sure for how long. Did you? Uh, did, did you I'm just curious if you've had any incidents, you know, as a child or anything that would bring you into this this subject, you know, at this time in your life or. You know, any catalyst moment? You know, for me, and it's a great question, I was uh, uh, born in Alaska, right? Uh, my dad was in the service, born there. We moved around Arizona, Nebraska, uh, Montana, and then he ended up back in Alaska. And it was that period of years, maybe two or three years, when I was uh, between like nine and 12 years old that it's Alaska, right? It's, it's, it's vast. We'd go fishing every weekend. There was one time my brother and I were uh, on the Kenai river and we're walking along the banks and in the fresh mud, we see a giant footprint. I'm thinking he says bear. And I'm thinking that doesn't look like a bear to me. All I know is that we got, it was, like just had happened. It was fresh, fresh. Like you could see some of the water had just uh, started to come up and pour into it, you know, that kind of look. So we got the heck out of there. But then we started looking. Uh, There's reports in the newspaper, like local Alaska, especially in that time frame, you didn't, you, and you still don't hear a lot about news up there. But these local papers would have things like sheriff sees, you know, uh, large hairy man or bigfoot run across the road sheriff responds to a uh, uh, hairy man uh, knocking on windows and and for little flaps right all over alaska in some areas and then the uh, indigenous people up there uh having stories and, and my my older sister worked for uh some indigenous people and she was into art so she'd carve these like uh totem poles and stuff. And she was saying, Oh, wait a minute, check this out. And this is, you know, this is what they have multiple names for, but different um, groups up there. But she was saying, yeah, they want me to carve this. This is right there with cougar, bear, owl, fish, you know, whale. This is the hairy man. And I was, I was all in, you know what I mean? It just, it, it captured my imagination. I, uh, started reading and referencing and watching anything I could on it. And not that didn't really change over the years up until, you know, a few years back when um, I got in a position to where, look, I, I want to get out there, get out there. You know, and I, I moved to an area of Florida at 25 minutes away, they had some pretty famous sightings and some on film. Right. So I started getting out, uh, hiking around there and referenced a few buddies that were in, into it and said, look, try this area, try this area. I went out there uh, one time and it was, there, there's a, an entrance that you go into that nobody can drive through. 
it's on the north side of this vast park, or Mayaka River State Park, which is just like a jungle. It looks like Vietnam, right? It's huge. I go to this one side to this bridge area, and I just feel compelled to ask permission to be there. Like, I'm going to put it out there. I'm just going to say, look, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, but if you're here, I'm here. And just start rapping like that. And the second I turn away, I could hear my foot turn on the gravel. I hear this loud guttural, like, it sounded like a, it sounded like if you ran across someone with emphysema at 65 years old that had been drinking heavily, but with a booming voice, like this loud. And I stop and I'm, I'm trying to calculate it. I'm like that. I don't think that really just happened because where it came from is the other side of this bridge here or when I say bridge, the river's here, the road goes over it and the water goes under it. And then it's just like jungle. It came from that side. You could actually park your cars and walk, hit, hit some trails behind us. And what struck me after that incident was uh, something you had said that you'd be surprised. Like these places aren't in the deepest, darkest, remote places you can think of. Right. And I, I'm just trying to assess when that happened. Like, Did that really, really happen? And I have no, I, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to chalk that up to that's, that may be something. I start going down the trail that I usually go down and I get about a quarter mile in, man. And I get this, I, I can't, all of a sudden I can't hear anything from the outside. I can't hear birds. I can't hear anything. It's almost like I'm in a dark room or a soundproof room and I'm getting goosebumps, hair sticking up. And I keep walking. I'm thinking maybe I think you might be psyching yourself out, but I couldn't hear. I literally couldn't hear anything outside. And uh, I proceeded about a quarter mile further. And then I chickened out. <laughs> I'm like, I, I think I just need to go back. And it, it, just flipped me out. it just kind of flipped me out. So after that, I, uh, you know, I linked up with some guys that were into the subject that had been in, in the film business on the subject and, um, just wanted to to start finding some places that were compelling. And I think even before then you and I had talked uh, initially or right about that time and I'd followed, you know, all your, your stuff and started really checking it out. Like, is there anything here that based off what I experienced that maybe matches up? And you said a number of things, but of course you're at a, a whole different level of uh, interaction. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to have to put myself in a position openly and honestly and see if I can, you know, have proof for myself, you know, somewhere else. And, and that kind of leads me to, you know, probably what we'll talk a lot about is, is uh, the Macy, the Macy Native American, the, the Omaha nation, the Macy tribe in Nebraska. And I, I ran across uh, Barry Webster and uh, I had gotten wind of him and started you know, just a conversation. And we ended up talking for like eight months and it was eight months of, you know, him really feeling me out, like him really vetting me and seeing, is this guy, what's his angle? Is he another dude trying to just come up here? And, you know, he didn't know. And, and I could tell there was like a, a history of, of him. It almost felt like getting burned or something by people, maybe like me or, or someone trying to angle to get up there. Let me put it that way. But we ended up uh, being invited up there, you know, and, and uh, we took a trip and we took kind of a big crew up there to document. And, you know, the first thing we did right was he said, uh, you know, we're looking at where do you stay? You know, where, where do you stay for four days when, when it's the Macy Reservation and it's 19 degrees outside? And he said, well, we've got these hunting cabins. But uh, you're going to have to call the guy and no one answers the phone, dude. I tried for like a month and then finally his daughter answered and we got a cabin and it's not a cabin like you think. It's just a couple bunks, no heat, nothing. And I went down, drove like 20 minutes and got these little space heaters for the cabins. And he said, I'm impressed. Everybody else that's come up here wants to stay, you know, in 30 miles away in a hotel. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 we're, we're here. We're here, here. And uh, and it began you know, nightly going out to like four in the morning uh, in areas that people from the outside hadn't ever been to, you know, areas that he said, look, we, we can't say this location, we can't say it by its real name. A couple reasons. Number one, 
we don't want anybody coming up here. Number two, it's actually within the tribe, it may be frowned upon that we are up here poking around. So he gave him kind of code names for some of these places. And um, yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of things that, uh, you know, they, they, they say it's all spiritual, that it's, it's, it's their faith-based approach that worked, you know, uh, they always knew they were out there. It's in their, their hit, written history, their oral history, their illustrated history. It was really with the advent of like finding Bigfoot got popular, what, 15 years ago that Barry's son approached him and said, well, we could go do that. We know they're out there. You know, they're Sitonga. That's their name for them. They're, they're an ancient people. Tribes said, look, I, that's not what we do. We, we coexist. We don't provoke. We don't seek. We've always coexisted with them. And Barry kind of said, well, check it out. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do this. And uh, he said they started going out with, you know, the finding Bigfoot tactics, the uh, yelling in the woods, knocking on trees. And it struck him. He's, he's a man of faith, like hardcore. And he said, I, I just I feel compelled to like have a spiritual kind of approach to them. And, and I'm going to pray is, is what he said. And, you know, it began a series of him having some direct encounters for extended periods of time and almost developing, well, not almost developing a relationship with what he called the Shaggy, the old man, an all white haired, 11 foot kind of leader of the people, the Sitonga people of which he said, there's, there's some that have lighter hair, darker hair, and you always see them congregate. If you see them, they're not going to be a mixed, you're going to see dark ones with dark ones, lighter haired. And he's like, I don't know what that's about. But he said, I estimate there's 30 individuals out in that area. And see, Ishagi clearly is the one that oversees all of them. Um, and he said, she, 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 uh, Ishagi, much like Neff, he said it was benevolent. He's uh, a care, caring person, benevolent person, benevolent soul. Like like they, they actually connected at a level that... Um, it was just him though, because once he started introducing team members to that, that interactions was still there, but it, it backed off. It backed off uh, when other people were introduced. So that's a long answer to your first question. Yeah. <laughs> and just to, uh, to, to revert back, sorry, I, I don't want to get off topic here, but just to revert back that print that you saw when you were a kid, you said it was still filling up. Was that just one footprint? Was there a trackway? How did, how did that situation look? Mike, it was one print. That's what so was it was kind meant of for you. It was left for you. It on was purpose. one print. Because if that's the thing that kind of freaked was, us out. Too. Yeah, if that if that was still <laughs> filling up, you know, if that was still filling up with water, that was just left. They, you know, he, she, they knew you were coming, and they wanted you to see that. So I, I think they imprint themselves on some of us early on in our lives. You know, it happened to me too at the age of 10, you know, traumatized me, but, and I buried it, but, you know, but I think that, you know, from what you're telling me, that sounds like it was, was purposely given to you, which is a good thing, you know, but uh, anyways, I just, I just wondered about that. So. No, that's, that's, uh, you know, and I never thought about, I mean, I thought about it at the time. I really remember what struck me was, seeing I when my brother said it's it's going to probably be a because my dad had retired and had a ceremony for his retirement and the guy next to him these two guys which are younger they probably had 10 years in the service the guy was going to retire and go to Indiana where he's from with his wife he went down to Kodiak Island to go bear hunting shot a bear and it killed him it came after him and killed him and my dad had to make the call and so that had kind of recently happened so in my mind I'm a kid right I'm thinking okay, I'm going to get killed by a grizzly bear because it's on my brother's mind too. But when we looked, we started thinking that maybe there's a, a baby bear near, so there'll be small tracks and big tracks, but it was just that one. And I'll never forget the water just starting to pour into that deep track. And it was deep, man. And so it can get a little distorted and deep, but it was huge. I mean, it was a huge track. And I'm thinking claw prints. And I remember it just didn't add up. There's just one giant print there. And it freaked us out, man. We literally just turned and ran. Yeah, that's pretty cool, though, to you know, to witness that. 
because you know it was just made and probably standing right there because they can stand right beside you um, on soft ground without making a mark. You know, I've been de- doing this for a decade now, right? Hundreds of prints a- in snow. Like we like to do the winners because uh, and, and I, I'm having prints appear right beside me in real time that aren't there and suddenly they're there. And so they have that ability to do that. So that's, that's pretty cool that that was given to you on purpose from, from what it sounds like to me. So. Yeah. And uh, I think to your point, even back the, the initial part of the question was leaving, leading up to that. I always had a sense of, um, no one else in my family was compelled like I was compelled. And I mean, when I say compelled, something in me said, they're out there, you know, they're out there. There's some, there's gotta be some way to make, make contact. Like I just knew, and I just knew it, you know? And, um, when, um, when we were up in Nebraska, you know, as, uh, to your point, we were up there the first night, uh, the second visit, because after the first visit was our boot camp was our see if we could cut the mustard run right and when we we did and establish this relationship he said i'd like you to come back up but you can't bring all those people you know because the, the way we do this is we might have two or three that go out and it can't be lights and stuff and people everywhere it just that that's not that's not how it, it it's more uh they're, they're going to be there, but they're not going to want to reveal anything because they're not going to know people. And he said, I tell you, they, they already know your heart and your spirit before you get. They already know this. They are. Yeah. I promise you, they already know it because he's experienced some things where people came up under the guise of having a good heart and it didn't go well for him. You know, large log thrown like right at the guy uh, and scared them off to where they didn't want to come back type things. So the first night I said, let's just split it up. Take me and a camera. And we'll turn them off. It's really your call. I'm not going to do, I have no agenda. You just do take us out. And he, he took us to a spot and we drove down this dark road. It's about two in the morning. And uh, he said, I've had, I've had things happen, you know, right, right in this area. Let's, let's just check it out. And we get out there. And what's interesting is it's, it's Nebraska, but it's right near the Missouri river. It's not like, it's like two hours North of Omaha. And then you, go near the river and there's timber you know but it's it's winter so the timber's bare and it's not like evergreen trees right it's it's a different foliage that there's no leaves so you could literally see through all the trees and then here's the road we walk down here you know we're standing on the road and right down here is tall just tall dead grass about three feet and then the timber down below that so i just said what do you want to do and he's like we're going to pray i said let's do it you know cut the camera and as, as he's um, praying, literally, Mike, 10 feet in front of us, we've been there for 20 minutes talking and rapping, and he's telling us the stories of things that happened before then. We're just shooting the breeze. Someone's having a cigarette, you know, and then um, once he starts praying, we hear in the tall brush, 10 feet from us, someone walking, like two feet, stomp, 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 stomp. And he stops praying and it stops. And uh, I have a hood on cause it's freezing and I take it off. And I thought, I wonder if my ears were scraping the inside of my hood. And that's what I heard, <laughs> but he stopped. So I said, I'm not going to say a word. Cause sometimes he gets pissed if I <laughs> like start talking or interrupt his flow. So I just remain quiet, like head bowed. He starts praying again. As soon as he starts praying again, Mike, this thing starts walking again, crunch, 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 crunch cameraman's a skeptic and they're like Dude, we're whispering do you, do you hear that and barry turns and smiles he's like yeah it's footsteps he starts praying again another set of footsteps come in and we said okay put the light there there's nothing there i mean it's literally not there's nothing there and it's not like a deer ran off this is someone walking towards us not away from us so at that point we're just thinking man and barry smiling he said look James has been here before. They know his heart and they might reveal a little bit to him, but they're not going to, you know, jump in front of him or, or appear, but they're pro- they might, they might want to get his attention and know if this is what you're after. Well, we'll introduce ourselves a little bit. So he kind of nudges me and says, James, you say something. And I'm like, 
uh, okay, uh, hey, you know, we're, we've traveled a long way. I come here out of uh, complete respect and reverence for, for you and your, you know, your people. I'm just here to, to make contact and you could do it any way you want. You know, if you want to throw a rock at me, if you want to uh, touch me, just please make contact, something to that effect. The second I get done with that, I start vibrating, like I'm shaking. And as you can, like on the film, that was real. Like I, I kind of stop and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm like what's wrong? And I'm bending over and I'm thinking I might even fall down now, you know, and I'm getting oily. It's 19 degrees out. I'm getting a little oily and I don't feel scared. I don't feel sick. I just feel like this energy is coursing through me and I, I, I don't know what to do with it. And that yeah, goes you, on. Sorry to interrupt, but you, you could see that. This is all, I just want everybody to know this is all in your film that you uh, see Tonga, Bigfoot, Spirits and Faith film. This, all this stuff that you're talking about, it's all because I just watched that recently, right? So, yeah. I, I'm just, I, I know the part you're talking about. Right? Actually, I know all of it that you're talking about right now. But, yeah. uh, I remember seeing you keeled over there. And so, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that. that's thank you for the plug. <laughs> it, and uh, after that, he says, uh, why don't we do this? And, and he's getting a little agitated and he's talking partly in his native tongue and partly in English. And he's saying, are you Sitonga or are you a spirit? And he said, I told you, I don't like I you don't you know, I don't like it when you do this. James is a friend. Don't be afraid of the light. It's his Joey. He's a cameraman. Don't we're here, you know. And uh, then he tells me, why don't you say something? And uh, I think at that point I was, you know, just holding on. He said, well, let's do this. He said, I'm going to make a noise and then you make a noise. And so he stomps on the road and he said, there, I did it. Now it's your turn. And we just had the one camera with the little mic on. We didn't have like, you know, uh, audio full on. And right after he does that, you hear two grunts. And we, we play it back. But when you're there and you're standing closer to where it happened, literally 10 feet away, something goes. <clears throat> and it was like loud when, without, you know, the camera's five feet away. So you, you hear it and we play it back so you can catch it. But the cameraman's freaked out because he's in the non-believer. And he goes, what the was that? And I'm like grunts and Barry turns and smiles and he's like kind of explained afterwards he's like listen this happens like they could the same thing they could leave a footprint and you're not going to know they're there they could walk in front of you they can grunt in front of you they could put some make you you know some energy but you're not going to see them if they don't want you to see them you know and I, I don't know what else to say Mike that I, I experienced that first night back you know um, yeah, that's cool. That's cool, man, that you got to see some of that or, or witness some of that. I'm very familiar with it. Um, I know that they can walk right up to you and you don't know it until they want you to know, like literally sit there and poke you or whatever. And you would not see anything if they don't want you to. It's uh, and, and the grunts and all that is just to show their presence, you yeah. know, the basically a gift right that's what they're they're doing they're allowing you to know they're there so it's it's all good right even though it might scare the shit out of some people but. <laughs> you know and what was interesting was if anything i i felt i said thank you and barry was sure to say thank you and if anything uh i you know you're trying to put together first off what could logically what logically could that have been you know what I mean? And I knew in my heart, I know exactly what it was, dude. That's never happened to you in your life. And it happens. And it happened at two in the morning on an Indian reservation where no, you know what I mean? They, oh, you didn't, we didn't have it planned. He didn't have a plan to go there. We were driving all over the place and said, we're the ones that said, what about that one spot? Uh, okay. And he took us there. It wasn't like, Hey, I have some guys meet me here at this time. It's not like that, you know? Um, and in parallel, another team, there was three of them and, and Barry's brother, Derek, led the charge in that. And he took them to a spot that, uh, man, I forget the code name they had for that. But it, it's, it's you know, these dirt roads and you get like timber and it's it's dark, dark, man. And we were out there. It's pitch black. And they get out there and they start seeing sets of lights pop up in front of them. And one of them actually rises, uh, you know 
quite a bit, quite a ways up. And uh, the cameraman they had with him is also kind of a, yeah, I, I don't know. And he's even like, look, man, I saw light go from red to like white to blue back to red. And RPG, who was with me, was like, and they, we had to do a recreation on that for the film because Derek stuck to his guns. He's like, I don't want those cameras on. You know, the first night, let's just make your introduction. So they never even got the cameras on for that. But it was good recreation. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Joey actually did that. He's good at that. And uh, we went back, they went back the next day in the daytime, which we show in the film. Just we, they wanted to go back and say, look, maybe it was uh, houses further out in the valley on the horizon that, and the trees maybe were moving and made it look like the, the lights were moving. Was they go out there, they kind of debunked that because there's a rise. They're seeing the lights here, right? There's a rise behind him that would block anything in the for a horizon type view. It's just it yeah. wasn't possible. And that's what they I think that's what really freaked them out. Because they I thought they were they thought they were gonna go back the next day and debunk that by going, okay, there's that's what it was. And, and it wasn't, you know, and RPG still talks about it. He said it actually looked like more of the bottom of a mothership at one point initially with lights kind of all over the place, but then when they moved and some changed colors, um, and then one of their uh, researchers on their team is a guy named Richard Soul, who's he's been going out there for 10 years. You meet Richard. He's a button down little super smart white dude that has a, a history in like clinical medicine. Like he's he's got a lot of reputation to, to, to blow by by putting it out there. And I took him aside one time and said, so what's the deal here, Richard? And he's like, James, I wouldn't come out here for 10 years in the cold if he's like they're here <laughs> they're here the things we've seen i promise you they're here and he was talking about even having in trees like bioluminescence almost like little flashlights where you see some of the tree uh tree trunk light up a few feet away from their eyes like that illumination going outward not just eye shine so we we um we experienced a lot of that up there as well. Um, and they did the lights and I had the experience with the walking and the grunts and the, uh, you know, people call it getting zapped or whatever, but it was just seemed like almost like an energy, like a touch, you know? And then, um, uh, as, as you saw on the end of the film, when they took us to some of these locations that were a hundred some odd year old abandoned houses on the reservation, um, some of the history they talked about before we got up there, they said, I don't, you're not putting that on camera. You know, that's sacred to the, uh, that's sacred to the homeland, you know, because some of the activities that were happening there were tied into ceremonial things on the homeland. And we're, we're not going to, we're not going to bring that up, you know, so no problem at all. But when we get in these places, it looks like I'm on the set of, uh, a horror movie. <laughs> These houses were like tailor made to walk in. It's like this looks like a horror movie right here. This house, and again, you know, they started getting more compelled with to use the spirit box. And I'm like, eh, I want to, I want to just see see Tonga Bigfoot. And he said, I understand that, but you don't understand. They communicate. It's all tied together. He said, there's a lot of things that you guys maybe would call paranormal or whatever activity. I'm telling you, it's all tied together with these people. And um, sure enough, that that last night, I'm I'm got this box and I'm asking questions and I, I kind of feel a little bit awkward with it because I've just never been a big believe. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I don't know, man. What's yeah, I don't use that stuff either. With Not with what I'm doing, no. Right, right. So I felt a little like a fish out of water doing that. Yeah. But then I, uh, it said, get ready. And I said, get ready for what? And it said, sit down. And as you can see in the movie, I'm behind this, a window's behind me that's blown out, just a big hole, right? And it says, get ready. I'm like, get ready for what? And it said, sit down. I said, sit down. And the next thing I know, I feel a little finger in the back. And... I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know. I'm looking. I'm thinking to someone from outside, but it's not like that. We're all inside and there's nobody there. And you can see the camera. There's nobody that comes up for me behind. And I said, did someone just poke me in the back? And it says, I did. Right away. I did. So I'm still going. I don't know. 
it happens two more times. And, and both times after that, it was in the back of the leg. And it was kind of like a little playful pinch in the back of the leg. And at that point, I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a step away from this thing here. RPG, you can, you can ask questions for a while. Um, and then as I get into the truck, after we wrap up, we're driving back to our little cabin and the back of my leg is it's getting warm, right? It's getting, it's getting pretty warm. And, uh, it's right where the little couple of pinches were. We get back there and I said, Hey guys, just humor me here. I'm going to drop my, I'm going to drop trow here, <laughs> drop my pants. Is there a mark back there? And as you see on the film, there's, there's a mark, yeah. there's a, a red mark on the back there. And at that point, I'm kind of wrestling with, wait a minute now, man. Uh, but then like, I hear you even in your opener where it's like, Hey, just touch me in the back, you know? Um, and, and Barry and his brother feel like that's, that's more again, them. And he said, it's you because you, they know your heart. They know your spirit. You've been up here a few times. They, they know. And I think they want to let you know, we know, you know, and, and we're, it's their way of saying we're cool with you. There's no harm here. I just want to get your attention, but almost, um, it was almost in a prankster kind of way too. Like that's how this they are, man. Big time. Yeah. I think they thought, let's watch this dude. What let's watch what he does. Watch. I'm going to do this. And, Okay, he hung in there. He hung in there. Let's, let's, I'm going to do it again. Uh, but it, yeah, it just the vibe felt not not dark at all. It felt very much like playing around with me is what it felt like. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very lighthearted. There's a lot of humor with them. Um, I've learned the children that they just they love interacting with us. Um, I just want to reflect back to the lights, too, that you witnessed. Um, I, yeah. I've, I've seen it once where uh, I saw, I believe it was one eye peeking out from behind a tree that was uh, I think the first night I went to go spend in my tent and I ended up walking back to Dwayne's cottage and, and crashing on the couch and him and his dad you know kind of making fun of me because you know this oh this big researcher guy comes in and you know I my first night right um, but uh, I saw I saw that eyeball lit up like it had a light turned on in its head there was no so they, and, and then there was a story that Dwayne told me where um, he's out in a snowmobile and there was a, I think it was him and his girlfriend were out in a snowmobile. This, and there was a pair of disembodied red eyes that kept up with them. And he's going, he's flying on this thing and it kept up with them. So, you know, there's been, uh, there's been a couple incidents um, there of, you know, eyes like that, you know, witnessing that similar thing. Right. So I don't know what that is, but, uh, but it's that. Yeah. And that's there. It's the same. Cause they've had 15 years of, of this and, you know, they've got, they've got probably like a lot of people in that position, maybe yourself as well. There's things that they don't just put out there for public consumption. Right. And there's some things that are, um, There's some things that that they, you know, I can only reference that are are, would yeah, end, I, would end the whole conversation, um, and also there was the same thing. We were driving really slowly, um, and we had the camera. Joey had the camera kind of pointed to this ridge, because he said that's I think I think we've got eye shine there, and sure enough, we saw we saw like light. And then we keep driving and then it's kind of following along, but we're driving, right? It's kind of following along on the ridge line, and then we stop and it's like, wait a minute, are we just picking up a house here or whatever? And you can tell because it it's not a consistent it was consistent in the shine, but it seemed that sometimes if it moved behind something it would block a little bit, then emerge somewhere else. Um and that happened a number of times up there. It's crazy. I know that orb activity is directly related to their presence. You know, I believe it also has to do with other stuff too, maybe ET, UFO presence, that sort of thing as well. But definitely um, with Sasquatch presence, I've witnessed it a few times now, um, both indoors and out. Uh, you know, so the, you know, I don't know if you saw a pair of eyes moving or or if it was actually an orb or um but uh, yeah, it's definitely this subject is just filled with 
with high strangeness, you know, and I, I've been using this, the term masters of energy for, for uh, quite some time now, because this is what I see, right. With what they're capable of. And um, did, did anybody uh, during your experience on that reservation, did anybody have any mind speak incidents at all? Anything like that? It's, it's loud and clear. You, you right. Know. So I would have to say no. Because if somebody had it, you, we would have, like you said, uh, it would it would be very clear, and you know nobody. Although the cameraman that was a skeptic when he was laying in bed one night, he was something with the light from outside, and then he couldn't tell if he was dreaming or not. And he, and he wants to debunk everything. He's just not down with it. And he was struggling with this light from outside, but there's no, you know, we had, we had these. It was there was no outside to see. It was it was completely like covered with this you know curtain thing but he 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 woke up and kind of wrestled with the whole like what was that what was going on and and that that kind of shook him up a little bit but other than that nobody had anything like hey i, I heard this clear as day now uh with barry um barry talks about uh with the shaggy as i mentioned the uh the the original kind of leader of of their people when the shaggy didn't come around for quite a while he kind of knew something was up like i don't think he's coming back and then they had him and his brother had an encounter with a large male that looked jack that looked kind of fearsome and as i talk about in the film they called him stevie and we're like you know going from ishagi this regal native name to stevie seems like a big leap like why, where did you come up with stevie from and they said when we saw him he was doing this, like moving his head like Stevie Wonder. That's why they gave him the moniker. But they said whenever they do see him, he he does he do, that's the way that's the way he looks at him. He said he kind of moves like the Cyclops and uh, Sinbad, the old claymation one on this old Sinbad movie. Yeah, yeah I remember of, that. He kind that was of a like favorite that. movie of mine when I was a kid. <laughs> mine too. I used to draw that for my daughter, so we got something in common there. Um, but he said the first time it was close to his brother and his brother was flipped out. Like I, I, it looks like we might be in trouble here. And Barry said he could in, like you said, the mind speak said to the effect of, so you're a man of faith. You need to show me what you're all about. Then you go ahead and pray like kind of a command. Like if that's what you're about, then let me see you do it. It, it was something to that effect. And he told his brother pray and they did. And, Stevie, you could tell the, the demeanor change, like, okay, so you, you are who you say you are. You're not going to run. You're not going to scream. You're, you're going to actually do that. And uh, there's been some other examples too, where, like he said, it's nothing that's audible. It's, it's right. Right. You know, the communication is, is to a point. And he's careful to, he, Barry's very careful to not throw that around a lot to say, Oh, I do all this mind speak. He's like, it's not really like that uh, at any level or with any consistency, but there are, there have been a few times where if that's what you'd want to call it, that's what I'd call it. I've actually experienced um, wood knocks. Uh, I, uh, one incident here behind the house that I'm quite sure was telepathic and it was too clear and um, there was a lot of wind. And, and then another time I, I had just woken up from a nap. I was on location and, and as soon as I opened my eyes, I got a clear, loud wood knock in my head, right? And so, it, you know, it, it makes me question the whole wood knock thing. If, like, how would you guys do that? Is that what you're doing? Are you, are you hitting trees? Or are you doing something else? You know, I think they're doing something else. That they, they, they can create sounds, you know, and smells. So they, they have a lot of... Uh, a lot of tricks up their sleeve, you know, what, what they're capable of. Um, uh, I, I was going to ask you, I'm curious what, what you think about uh, why mainstream science is avoiding, you know, we, we have Meldrum on the subject, but to me, he's basically hit a wall. He, he's not going any further, right? Um, why, why is there only basically him, right? I think the ex. Bigfoot expedition show or something. They have another biologist on there, but they all tend to not want to touch anything outside a strictly 
you know, flesh and blood being right. But um, for the, for the, the, the whole of the subject, you know, the science should be all over this. There's thousands and thousands of sightings, credible witnesses documented through history. And, and yet, you know, it seems like we're just towing this line, you know, forever, not, not really progressing, although we are because of, you know, folks like us, boots in the ground that are out in the field doing this work and getting these experiences and sharing this stuff. But for the most part, you know, science is definitely are basically ignoring it. You know, do you have any thoughts on that? Or? That's a great question, Mike. And when you were talking, a couple things struck me. And I'll, I'll take this to a big picture. And I, I, I went down the rap, not rabbit hole. I, I was sharing this with a, a, someone else we know commonly that was on their podcast. I've, I've linked up with a, a guy that happens to be a professor of theology, doctorate in theology, uh, doctorate in ancient history, doctorate, three master's degree from Kentucky, right? So he's got this disarming little accent, but he's a brilliant guy. And as I get to know some of these other people and I get more in the scholarly world on some of these universal questions, what I discovered was, let's take it back to this. We're talking about science and how, how they refuse, they hit a wall. And instead of accepting, well, maybe, maybe just maybe we should investigate. It's like the origin of the universe, the biggest of the big pictures. Whether you're a theologian or whether you're a scientist, it's kind of agreed. And there is a fact that the universe is expanding at a, a certain rate. It, it just is. Like that, that's, that's fact. Gravity also has a contracting effect. And it, without those two things being perfectly imbalanced, the universe would move too fast. Matter wouldn't set up. There would be no life. If it contracted just a little bit more, it eventually would close in on itself and it would be the big crunch, not the big bang. They both agree that the big bang happened. But even Stephen Hawking, who was a devout, there can't be intelligent design, said before his death, he said, you know, if the universe was always expanding, it was it started at a zero point with no matter, no gas, no chemical. It started at a zero point. The big bang is an effect. We don't know what the cause is. The only probable cause is outside of physics. But science says we won't accept an intelligent designer of the universe as an answer. What we're going to do is we're just going to keep we're going to introduce quantum physics. We're going to induce we're just going to keep looking at everything else until we get something and not concede that there's something outside of what we know. Bigfoot world. It's kind of the same thing. Well, we don't have a body. We don't have this. We can hear all the stories we want, as compelling as we want. We simply will not go down that path. Uh, we'll explain it away some other way until you bring a body to them, which is unfortunate. But until then, science is supposed to be the investigation of these things and, and observing things. And, and think about it when how far science has come with good people that were on the notion of, this is a, this seems impossible, but now the more we look into it, it's not only possible, it's probable, then it's reality. Now we know where it comes from. It's almost with these some of these other things, like like Sasquatch. You know, uh, they're just gonna they're not gonna look into it. Or we could go the other route and say they have looked into it and they know more than they're letting on to. And you could go down the whole conspiracy tree, which there's probably good credence that they do have good evidence for it, and and that you know. What, why protect it or, or do they know how to tap in or re-engineer their abilities? Is that what they're working on? Who knows, right? You could go either way. But for whatever reason, I think, uh, I think that's it. Just, um, either they're so stubborn in their in science has its own dogma, right? Science kind of has its own religion. Its own ego, yeah. Its own ego, and, and it's in itself, right? It's, it's the opposite of what it's designed to do, the spirit of it has been crossed, you know, over, over a period of, of centuries, it's kind of went from anything open to the ideas of other things beyond us to we are, we are it, we are it. And now you're going to have to, you're going to have to drag a body in or something I can measure flesh and blood or forget it. We won't even look into it. I think it may be more of that, but I can't be sure. I can't be sure, but you know, or else they know a hell of a lot more than they're letting on to. Uh, I, I think they know more than they're letting on. You know, what, whatever 
small group that would be, you know, that uh, it seems like don't rock that boat. It, it, this has been throughout history too, though, yeah. right? There's, you know, anybody that challenges the status quo, you know, you're basically ostracized. And, and, and that's not true science. If you bring some compelling stuff to the table, you know, then it should be, uh, it should be challenged and, and there should be people, you know, going out there, boots on the ground, trying to, uh, you know, document the same results, uh, at least with this subject now, you know, that is happening, right? There's uh, a lot of people that have finally opened their minds to the fact that there's more going on here. And so we're getting folks out there in the field that are uh, all getting the similar experiences with the, you know, the whole paranormal aspect for whatever lack of a better term uh, with, with Sasquatch. Right. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I've seen it evolve quite a bit since, since I, I first got involved. Um, I, I remember I had the support of a, a couple science minds that, have, you know, since passed sadly, because they, they were, they were open-minded, but um, at the same time, you know, I was, I was asked, Hey, can you not talk about, this, you know, this stuff, we got to prove their existence first. And I, and I remember I said, no, sorry, too little, too late. It's like, yeah. my thought is give it all and let's sort it out afterwards. Cause if we, if we wait for you guys, you know, this is going to be decades. It's, you know, it's just, it's taken far too long, you know, spent about the last four, 40, 50 years and how far have we gotten and then in the last 10 years, you know, we've really made some uh, progression. So, you know, it, it, it's, yeah. Let me ask you this, Mike. What do, do you think, because it struck me too, that I wonder if there's a bunch of closet Sasquatch Bigfooters that are scientists out there. You know, that they, that it's almost like even politically, if you're at a university and you, you express an opinion, uh, it could be on a variety of things that you know that'll ostracize you from and your tenure could be at stake uh your chair could be at stake that they actually see some of the stuff that you do uh maybe some others and know in their heart i, I believe there's something to this and on the down low maybe start looking into it do you think there's a community like that i i believe so i've i've actually had is it one or two uh, i think a couple over the years you know, contact me privately through email and basically, you know, say, Hey, you know, I, I believe what you're, you're doing, you know, is, is the real, the real stuff, but, but I can't say anything, you know, publicly that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, I believe so, you know, and, and, uh, you know, at this point uh, it is opening up a bit more. So that's, that's a good thing. And I, like by myself, I push it, man. I yeah. push hard. You know, I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks anymore. I have so much, they've given me so much experience and so much supporting evidence. I just, I tell it like it is and it's batshit crazy. And <laughs> I, wear, I wear it like a badge of honor at this point. So, so check this out. I, uh, you know, by day, I, 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 I do my, I, I guess a friend told me one time, he said, you know, I think your issue is you're unemployable. <laughs> what he, what he meant by that was I, I really, I don't like to do it the way the world does. I, I, I started my own business defiant, almost defiantly at the worst possible time, but I, I just can't, I don't want to work for anybody. Right. And so it kind of afforded me the time to look into all this stuff. And, um, uh, but my clients, like I have a friend, I have good, a good friend of mine. She's, she's super cool. She's kind of in a high level role with a massive company. And she's like, hey, man, I, I'm a recruiter, right? A headhunter. I find certain people in certain niches and they pay me a fee if I find them, right? So, and place them with them. So she said, look, I want to introduce you to so-and-so and so-and-so who I report to. I know you got your own business. That they, We'd love for you to work with or for us, but we could just put you on like a contract basis and you could work, you know, help us. And, and we pay you like on contract and you just, you know, do your business the way you do it. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'm down with that. But as I get to know these people, you know, a VP of this, a VP of that for a tech company, uh, I told them, yeah, I'm not going to be available next month for two weeks. And why? 
and I'm just out with it. Or I, I, I try to document this what stuff. And I tell them exactly what we're doing. And I got to tell you, that contract wrapped up. Eight months later, I still get texts. Hey, so anything new happened? Like, they're very interested. Like, these are people you would not think are interested in it. But once you talk to them and they get to know you and they realize James may be a lot of things, but he's not delusional and he's not crazy. And we know his family. Like, I don't think he's got good reasons why he's doing this. And then you start talking about the evidence and they're like, hold on. I wanted to talk to you about some business, but let's uh, let's talk about I've got 20 more minutes to talk about this stuff and five minutes to talk about business. And they all want to They want to hear it. And it's it's crazy because I think there's so many people out there that still don't want to be stigmatized that, you know, they they want to know, but they want other people to find (laughs) to find out and report back to them, because I don't think a lot of people will put themselves out there like that. And there was a time initially where I felt a little funny doing it. Now I'm like, hey, listen, this is me. It's my truth. Like, I'll, I'll just be straight up. And when they talk about what did you experience? Well, and I tell them exactly what I experienced. And they're just like. You know, they're, they're kind of looking in your eyes like, I, I know he's telling the truth right now. Now, now I got to wrestle with, well, if that's true, then maybe everything I thought I know maybe isn't true. And, and uh, conversations like that start. So it's interesting. And I know you put it out there, brother. I mean, I told somebody on a conversation, I said, you know, Mike would be better served uh, if he wanted to be liked to never talk about this again. But clearly, Mike <laughs> doesn't care about what other people think. And it's that important to him because he doesn't benefit. And, and you're, you've always been of interest to me, Barry and a few other people, because it's over a decade. It's over a decade of no benefit and mostly benefit in the, in the, the sense of what people would say is a benefit to them. You know, first off, am I making money? Am I famous on a show or something like that? None of those things. Ridicule, Barry with the tribe. You know that it's Barry's a stand-up guy. Like I think he's running for tribal council. Barry used to. He's hard headed that guy. <laughs> yeah, he was featured in a, an ESPN in a good way. In a good way. article about uh, he played basketball at the collegiate level for like a tribal league, and they got to this tournament where. Some people got hurt. Some people fouled out. And he had, they had to finish the game. His team had to play three people against five people. And Barry dropped like 30 points and they won the game with his three people. And they wrote this article called The Three-Man Weave. And it was all about his story. And he went to the University of Nebraska, you know, educated himself. And uh, so he doesn't drink. He's a man of faith. Like he, Here's a guy that's like he gets more uh, guff from people and you hear it in the film and, and I hear it when I'm up there. That's why he's got a chip on his shoulder about people kind of doing their Bigfoot research online. That's where that's like they, they all of a sudden now they know and they can talk about what you Barry calls it spiritual. You might have a different term for their special abilities. But when you leave a footprint in the snow that wasn't there five minutes before you went to smoke a cigarette and came back or a handprint or your vocalizations or being touched or a million other things. And, and likewise with Barry, all these things, um, he, he, like he says, wait, if you come into my world, then you can judge me. Like then you can, you can start talking about, you know, your little internet research and how you're determined that there's no woo factor here, that they're a large primate. It's like, we're talking about Bigfoot, a creature that for most people is a unicorn. And you want to all of a sudden say, well, no, they're a large primate that primarily, here's their diet, here's their, you know, these people talk like they've got some body of evidence, biologically speaking, and they've got some biological training to make this claim, and therefore, Mike Patterson's crazy, James Brost is crazy, Barry Webster's crazy. It's just, it's, it's so ironic that I guess at some point you just have to laugh, right, and go, yeah. whatever, I'll meet you out in the field sometime and take you some places and you know, maybe you can experience it for yourself and then you can tell me. Oh, how I how I wish for so many of those people who are in denial to experience this stuff firsthand. It would I, I think some of them would wet themselves, you know, uh, well, when I when I first understood what they were capable of and the fact that they were people and I, I just I wanted to when I even when I learned they 
existed, you know, with that first vocal that I experienced, I wanted to stand on the mountain tops and scream to the world, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and then ever since just unfolding and learning that there are people and they have names as we do, you know, they, they have their personal names, you know, Neff, we used to call Mr. Funny until we learned his name, Nefatia. Um, I think we've got nine names out of that family so far. And, you, you know, they're, they're just different, you know, they're different, uh, different humans, human types. You know, I, I, you see this whole ape, um, people thinking they're some offshoot of Gigantopithecus or something. There's no divergence in the toe. You know, you look at their feet, they're human. They look just like ours, only much bigger, right? You know, you might get a odd one with some deformity or something, but but their feet are just like us. So I think, I think there's a, it's very difficult for a lot of people to accept that. I think, you know, the, the fact that we have these invisible giants walking around the woods that are, uh, you know, they're faster, they're stronger, they're, they're very intelligent. They're, they can do the impossible and, you know, it's pretty fantastical. And, and I can understand the, the denial from the, it, it really exposes the conditioning of the human mind. You know, that's this whole subject really exposes how conditioned humans are in, in, in our thought process and, you know, how we've been manipulated to think a certain way. And, and this subject, like firsthand experiencing this stuff really just breaks that barrier. So it's pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And, um, you could take this subject and apply it to a million other subjects out there. And like you said, it's all about the conditioning and no one really knows some of the things that they've been conditioned, but they're just trusting the conditioning to say, well, that's truth. And if you say something different, then, then that's not truth. Even though you, you've experienced it and I haven't, it can't be true. It, it's, it's kind of my, it's kind of mind blowing, right? It's, it's like the, it's juvenile. But yeah. that's where we're at with it. You know, that's where we're at with it. And, and the more it seems like the harder you push, the more you're just going to it's like politics. No one's going to change their opinion. <laughs> right. People put it out there, but no one changes their mind. They just dig in harder and go into their echo chambers because people want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to seek truth and, and, and look at open mindedly at both sides of anything. They are just going to go to their echo chamber to feed what they already believe. What do you get from that? You know, you're not going to make any progress. So. Uh, I think, to your point, I'm 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 just picking my shots, and I'm going to explore it. I don't want to do one and done. You know, they they want me back up there and have been beckoning me to come back to the reservation and and maybe start to unfold some other things that uh, are very important to them and and very important to the story as a whole. Uh, but it's timing, right? It, it's timing, and and uh, at some point, I'll, I'll I'm sure I'll do that. You know, how, how, far, how far traveling is that for you to get there? It, it's probably a two and a half hour plane ride, you know, oh, okay. you maybe either. three, maybe three. And and uh, and then another hour and a half, two hour drive to the reservation. But what's kind of cool is they've got a license up there on the reservation to where if anyone reports anything or if they're going to go out with someone like me, they just call the tribal police and say, hey, we're headed out tonight. So if you see these trucks driving around the ridge or whatever, tribal police just leave them alone it's barry and Derek out there and they're the ones that people call and, and there's the next thing is we're going to dive into the community as a whole because there's so many people up there even in the uh, film it talks about in world war ii white buses from the government came up took the young men off the res and said you're going to war and especially on this one ridge up there where these little houses were some of them didn't come back you know and some were gone for years and the women Barry's grandma told of, look, see, Tonga would come bring firewood and set it. We'd come out and there'd be firewood, right? And sometimes you'd see them and they'd bring firewood because there wasn't any men to do that. So at that point, they were kind of in, in cooperation and partnership with these women that couldn't fend for themselves. And in turn, the women would leave food out and they would take it as the gift. But they had this whole kind of, you know, your people, you're, they're, in, they're in some trouble right now. We can help. Um, and really Barry and Derek got pretty involved too, when they started getting 
again, I think there's a, a almost a prankster kind of mentality to them where some of them will just mess with people and grandmothers are calling, Hey, you're scaring my grandkids, you know, Barry and Derek, what you, are the guys, what can you just at least come out and take a look? So they get calls all the time on the reservation and there's a large cave system that runs underneath there too. And, and they've got reason to believe that they, uh, you know, if they want to, but I'm of the mindset that they can kind of be where they want to be, but I still feel like they, they do use a lot of the physical things that, that, you know, people would use and they they're pretty convinced especially with some of the uh, findings they have that they use that cave system for a number of things i i've you know i've witnessed vocals indoors like we've heard neff's voice indoors and at this point he's probably close to 10 feet tall and and you know I, it boggles my mind you know how like you know is your head going through the ceiling what you know, <laughs> i don't get it right so yeah, it seems like they can they can be anywhere, and and I've learned too they can travel, like, very very quickly, um, great distance. But um, I was I was going to ask you, are you doing you know have you been going in into any woods near home or anything you know going for any trail walks anything you know, like that? I've I've been that was put on hold for a while. We had a hurricane category five hurricane come through here. Uh, some months back and That's, that was huge yeah it literally the trails were inaccessible they were flooded and and i went out there gosh i went out there last month to you know been itching to get back out and most of them had, were still closed up now they've opened back up from what i understand so i'm going to get back out there uh, and the weather's you know before it gets too hot because it's florida right it's it's africa hot <laughs> <laughs> like uh you know 90 degrees and 75 percent humidity uh and uh as rpg puts it because he moved here from rhode island and we took him out in the middle of mayaka in an area where these guys had encountered one some years before and someone had filmed one uh at two in the morning and we the park authorized us to go in a section that no one can go and it's deep it's dark it's it's jungle basically. And we're trying to explain to him that if you run across a gator or if you see the gator slot, like what happens when you happen upon a gator, if you happen upon a hog. And he said, is there anything in this, in the state that doesn't kill you? <laughs> and he said, you guys are like five degrees separation from Australia out here. It's kind of true. So you have to be, you know, mindful. I remember the first time I went out years back, I'm bebopping down a trail. I'm, I'm walking in this, this giant hog just comes walking out and it stops right in front of the trail about 20 feet from me. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, do I run? Do I just stand there? So I stood my ground and it looked at me, but it was also kind of rooting on the trail and it wasn't going to stop rooting. Like it didn't mind that I was there, but if I wanted to go forward, I'd have to go right up to it. And I'm like, we're going to pick another trail today. We're just going to turn around and pick another trail, you know, and, and, Heck, in our neighborhood, you we have gators coming up to people's front doors and stuff. Um, and they don't, you know, they're not in attack mode unless it's like you happen upon a mating season in an area that they're, you know, actually out in the wild, uh, which is about now. You know, so there's you've got to be careful in some cases. But I am going to be getting back out uh, to the one area where I heard the, uh, the loud grunt because there's been... Uh, there's been stuff out there. In fact, Stacy Brown Jr., who I did stuff with, uh, when he was finding Bigfoot, came down <laughs> years back, and that's where he took him. There's a there's another spot too that we go um, that also was very flooded out, and they actually have this boardwalk you could walk back, and that thing got dilapidated over the years, but that's I guess being rebuilt too. So there's a couple spots that I like to go to that are maybe 25 minutes from my house that I haven't been able to go to really this year because of uh, all the rain and then the hurricane, but I'll, I'll be back out soon for sure. Do you ever um, think about leaving like an audio recorder overnight or something, you know, going back to retrieve it? Yeah, I, I, I have, and I, I, I will be doing that. There's what I want to do is pick, pick some spots that I can access now. 
and it's really accessibility is, is the biggest challenge. And so there's some spots I want to I want to uh, access and do one spot in particular that I want to I want to do that with. Um, and even in you know you're talking about the lights, we went to uh, north of here or north of Florida where I live into kind of central Florida, but further up north in a spot that's just vast and has a history. It's also got a history of these lights appearing. And we had a crew. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Seth Breedlove and Small Town Monsters. He's got a litany of any subject of big, mostly Bigfoot, but he's he's been doing it for years. He's got a great body of work and they wanted to kind of uh, do a Florida YouTube thing, right? So on the road and, and they asked us to take them to a spot and we took them. Well, uh, they're very much in the, it's an animal camp, right? And we get up there and it happens to be the coldest night on record in Florida. Like it was 22 degrees. It was crazy. So we get out and we tell them, well, you three go ahead with your lights on, go up the trail here and we'll follow about five minutes behind you lights out and just see if you stir anything up. They go ahead and we're walking behind them five minutes, just like planned. And we start walking and as clear as day, we hear like a knock that echoes into the night, like a bat on a tree, right? In the freezing cold. And we call up ahead to them. Did you guys just do a knock? And they, they misheard us. And they said, no, 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 do not do any knocks. We said, wait till everyone gets up there. We said, no, no, we didn't. Did you? And they said, of course not. We told you to wait. No, no. Did you? No. And it was only right off to the side, about 20 yards. One of the kids that was with us from their group lit, was on, you know, Bluff Creek and, and all his research and stuff had been up in that area. And he said, dude, that's the clearest knock I've ever, ever heard. We go walk about th a minute later, even louder, echoing to the night. We just freeze. And we're like, wow. And we get up there and we start talking about it. We meet up with them. We all walk back. We're milling around by the cars. And me and that same kid from their group, we're looking into the wood line ahead of us. We're just talking. We see a blue ball of light go from below the tops of the trees and this, this crazy zigzag and then just take off. And we had no cameras on, but we had, he had an audio recorder on. And you hear us both go, what the was that? And we're flipping out. Then they turn the cameras on, and we're trying to describe what we saw. And now these are guys that think there's there's no woo factor at all, right? And and this, he couldn't fathom, like, he's like, do you guys have gigantic fireflies? <laughs> we're like, we don't have gigantic fireflies, or fireflies, and they don't come out in 22 degrees. And we don't have any luminescent bugs that are softball size and blue. Like, and... I first thought shooting star, like putting it in my head, but it was below the tree line. And he's like, no, dude, that happened right there in the tree line. It was below the tree line and zigzag through the trees. I'm like, right. And, uh, you know, they have a history of it up there, but we heard the knocks first and then saw that. And so it was, it was, it blew his mind. It blew my mind. It was, I've never seen anything like that, you know, and we saw that. It, it sounds to me like, um, you know, the, the hairy folk, they knew you were in there. They knew you were looking for them. And they, you know, give you a little taste, right? Throw you a bone. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they do, right? I, I get wood knocks uh, here at home sometimes behind the house. I, I'll record back here. I'm, I got woods behind me, right? And mm -hmm. I've had some nights where, man, I've had the, the, the trees, like, pretty close, just hit so hard, just amazingly, yes, boom, like, wow, you know. Um, one night I had about five dozen wood knocks, and they did it from different proximities throughout the whole night. Each one was a different tone. Each one was a different spot, you know, and, and it, it was just, it went on all night long, man. And and then the, the loudest ones were right before I went to grab my audio at six o'clock in the morning, and and it was like right here, just like really close to the knocks, and they were just huge, you know. And they know I'm recording, you know. Yeah. It's it's not for anybody else. They they know I'm recording, you know. It's like yeah, we're here, Mike. And then I, I had one um, morning where I uh, this, there was snow on the ground, so I'm crunching through the snow to go pick up the audio recorder, and I don't hear it. But when I played it back, 
as I'm walking up to it, there's a big crack, big uh, stick snap right at the microphones. You know, it's like uh, they, they know I'm going to hear it afterwards, right? There's nothing there. There's no sticks breaking, you know, it, it's just is what they do, right? They're standing and, right there. And, and, you know, when you that makes a point you brought up earlier is that uh, when science, think about, think about what we're talking about here. The fact that it's not like you're going to outsmart them, outrun them, out trick them. It's the, they're holding all the cards. Yeah. And that's why you don't have a body. That's why you don't, uh, you know, if I want to put up, uh, if I'm just a random person and, and for whatever reason, I'm not, I kind of put it like this. I think there is a connection with people like, like certain people, well, how they determine that connection. I don't know, but there's some people that I think they feel safe revealing things to, and maybe even fostering if the conditions are right, a relationship, it, it your case, right? Maybe my case, I don't know. And do you think that people putting happenstance trail cams up and, and baiting and stuff like that, do you think they're ever going to get like the Holy grail? Uh, no, not unless they want you to, it's yeah. when they want you to, and when they decide and when they, when they want it revealed, they'll reveal it, you know, and science that doesn't jive with science, you know, like, like, well, how can, you know, I can't build a, a thesis on, on that or, or, or get a strategy around that. No, you're right. You can't, you can't. So maybe, maybe, you know, in that case, you are at a dead end, unless someone from science is chosen, in which case they'll decide. My, my approach um, at one point changed to like, I was putting up trail cams at first, right? You know, doing the wood knocks and, uh, you know, w with Neff's family right at the beginning. And, uh, you know, I evolved with it. But uh, um, at one point, I thought, instead of trying to trick them, I'm just going to buy them a camera or buy a camera for them to play with and see if anything happens. And they've given literally dozens of images. You know, it's like, hey, here you go, guys. At this point, it just sits on the table indoors. I've, I've literally had images. Um, this, this little camera right here. Just this little point and shoot, you know. Um, I've literally had it sitting on the table in front of me, and I'm checking it, and uh, images appear um, or have appeared as it's sitting there and it hasn't left my sight. So they're manipulating the electronics, you know, without me leaving the immediate area. So it's. Uh, I've noticed they can they they can manipulate all of our electronics from what I can see. Yeah. But it's it's uh, I, how they do that. Who knows? It's crazy. Yeah. In fact, the night we we're up there after that happened, it was the next night. It was a little warmer, and we went to this other area, and there was some. We we're getting a sense that there was something kind of out around us, and one of the kids that had a camera, uh, he was the same one I brought to Nebraska. One of the ones. He was like, oh, man. And his camera started um, the uh, the night imaging, whatever. It just he's like, dude, it's doing it's never done this before. It's charged and it's it, it's flipping out. And it was right when that was going on. It was just like he was freaked out. It's like it's never done this before. This is a new camera. I use it all the time. It's fully charged. This thing, there's no reason. There's no like troubleshooting this. This, this isn't like a function of if this. If something goes wrong, this is what happens. And it, it just started flipping out on him like that, right as we were getting some activity. Uh, so it, it uh, that that night, and then especially when I brought him up to Nebraska, kind of changed the whole dynamic, I think, in his head anyway, of like what's possible and what maybe what really is or isn't with what he thought about, uh, you know, Sasquatch could be or, or is. Um. I'm just uh, wondering uh, if, if anybody's got any questions, if you want to put them in uh, capitals here. Um, I don't I don't know if uh, I can answer that one, but um, I don't know if you have any response to that. So what do you feel uh, it's from uh, El Elbu Creations? Uh, what do you feel about Bigfoot being a true branch of humanity from before the Great Divide? I don't know if that's uh, I, like to to know how long they've been around. 
I asked someone at one point, um, you know, are you the first people? They, they responded with a yes. You know, it, it really makes me wonder how long they have been here. They really do seem to be um, so connected. Well, they are so connected with the earth at a, at a just unfathomable, hard to say that one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's uh, it, it's it's hard to you know just fathom how long that they've been around. I, could it be millions of years? I don't know. You know, it, it it's uh, it's hard to say. You know, and I think, like you said, I, from what even in talking with you know Seminole tribes down here in Florida and, and Barry's uh, people in in Nebraska and and some others, it always comes back to they always tell me this: they're an ancient people yeah they're an ancient people and and being dialed into the earth they know how to use, physics is still trying to figure out how energy and and everything works you know physics wise somewhat outside of physics it's it's inherent to him them to be able to not only they can utilize the energies that we, we're just not built that way they've i don't know if it's through you know the history that they've for lack of a better term, evolved to be able to access that. But they, they, they seemed all the natives that I've talked to have always said they're, they're just an ancient people and they, they call them spiritual. My spiritual, I uh, was talking to a seminal uh, medicine man here. And he said they had a name and I can't think of it right now. And the name was the people that vanish. And he said, they can leave a footprint or you can't see them, but they can leave a footprint and you, you can't see them. And it's like, exactly. You know, that's, that's just something they're, they're saying from their understanding of it throughout time. And, and it's something we experience now. And it just, I don't think that's a coincidence. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think that's a coincidence. Yeah. The, um, their, you know, their abilities are just, it, it's absolutely mind blowing. You know, I, I don't, um, I, I'm hoping at one point, and, and been very close to that. I catch a footprint being made in real time. It's happened so close. Like I'm sitting there looking for prints and there's nothing there. And we're like, okay, let's go inside. And I take one last glance before we walk. Bang, there's a footprint. You know, that wasn't there literally five seconds earlier. And then we're checking that out and suddenly there's you know, three, four or five more. I can't remember what it was, um, two or three different individuals and just right there in real time. And then, then I got marbles dropping while we're sitting there looking at yeah. the print. Right. Um, it's, uh, you know, I've been hit with a snowball and I've captured a laugh, <laughs> a laugh on camera, you know, while my camera's running and he, and he laughs a little young guy, right. You can hear his laugh. Um, so yeah, it's just astounding what they can do. Um, what's this? Uh, somebody says, how, how can some people communicate with them if not at a park? Um, so again, that comes down to consciousness. I think, you know, their understanding of consciousness is, uh, have, have you ever had any, any dreams where they've shown up in your dreams? I have. And have, have, you woke, have you woken up like when that dream was over? Did you wake up immediately or? You know, I, I, I did. I did. And there was a, uh, there was one night where I was, and it's always so it's always, it's different than other dreams. That's the thing. It's different than that. I almost felt like I was in between and what woke me up was my wife let out a gasp. And I said, what's wrong? And then now I'm fully conscious. And she said Some, something, it wasn't the cat, but didn't some someone, like something touched me on this side of the bed. And there's just like a, a nightstand right there and, and, and a little space in between. And, you know, and it kind of, it freaked her out, you know, and she's a deep sleeper. So I knew something had to really touch her, but it was in parallel to me having that kind of, uh, it takes me a long time to fall asleep, but I was falling to sleep, started to get that imagery. And then, she literally gasped and, and shot up and, and was freaked out. And for her, like she's, I'm the guy that's a very, very light sleeper. And, and it's, it's like, she's comatose sleep. So 
that type of stuff's happened before. It's it's uh, it's was, was it sorry was that before or after um, visiting the reservation? It was after. It was after. See, I, I think once once you connect to them, you know they can find you literally anywhere, and I mean literally anywhere. And the activity can show up. I've had activity show up in my vehicle. I've had it show up at a workplace. Um, there was a, a thing going on with smells at one point, you know, and they, they, they put a stream of um, smell right up my nose. I, I could feel a, a wind, like a streamlined wind of dog shit, you know, <laughs> right up my nostril. And Dwayne's sitting right there. No, nope, smells nothing, right? But uh, when, I went to, when I went to a job site uh, after that visit, you know, it was, I, I think it was on the Monday, um, I'm, I'm by myself at this one, one spot, and suddenly I get that same smell. It wasn't put up my nose, but it was there around me. It was faint, but it was distinct to the point where I, you know, I'm looking at the bottom of my shoes, right? And then I went out to my car, and I have some things hanging from my rearview mirror, and they were wrapped around and, and actually tied around the little thing that you flip from night to day. You know, they, they literally tied it, right? So they can find you anywhere. So my point being, you know, from you being at that reservation, it wouldn't surprise me that they followed you home, you know, and, and showed up in your dream and, and let your wife know they were there too. Yeah, put it this way, Mike, and this is straight up. I stepped away from it a little bit because my wife, it was, it was concerning to her. Like just some of the things in our life that she felt maybe were, it freaked her out that I got touched number one and that, that there was a mark there and some of these other things. And I could see, she, listen, she's embarrassingly supportive of me. The sweetest woman in the world, but I could tell she started to get a genuine, like me, I'm, I'm getting more and more like, this is a, a awesome, excited about it, but it's hard to, I, it's hard for me to sit here on this conversation and articulate. And maybe you can understand that some of the, the nuanced things that happen that, that are in your home. And it, it, it gave her, I've got two little girls and my wife at home with me. Right. So I had to consider and some other things, maybe, maybe I'll step away just a bit. You know what I mean? Maybe. And, and step away almost meant like, cause once you, once you're in it, man, it's not like, okay, well, you know what? None of that happened, man. Let's just go pretend like none of that happened. Let's go back to, uh, to what, you know what I mean? Uh, so I had to put that kind of, let's just separate myself from it for a little bit for, for, for their sake, to some degree. Yeah. That's that's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. Um, but as I'm a good salesman, so <laughs> as I start talking like about you and, and, and this, you know, what we're doing and, and she knows for years that I've, you know, admired and just really respected what you do. And also she knows about the slings and arrows that come with what you do, uh, at, yeah. you, know, you know, so, and, and I don't, she also knows that I could care less about, you know, uh, being a, a famous anything, you know, and I make it very clear in the film that, look, dude, I'm not, I'm nothing, man. I'm a guy that had a troubled, troubled past, you know, with, with uh, alcohol and drugs. It cost me a couple families, you know, when I was a younger man. And, um, you know, once I pulled out of that and, and, and got my family reunited and started doing things I didn't think I could do, you know, start a business, get a house, you know, that's the things I wanted. But inside of me, the yearning was this is what I, you know, my passion was that calling. It's like a calling, right? Like I I need to get out there. It's calling me. And, and uh, I, you know, she she understood that and understands that. And so when I talk about it, she sees how passionate it just it's in me. So she knows he's going back out. Like, I know he's going back out. I just don't know when. But she wouldn't deny that because she knows that it's a, it's kind of a lack of a better term, a relationship that's been formed with, with, with what's out there. And, and, you know, the part about why I got out of it for a little while is not something that I throw around a lot because it's, it is what it is, but it's also, I'm going to be straight up with it too. I'm not going to, you know, 
uh, be honest, there's there's some people, if you do this and you feel you're called, you might get more than you bargain for. And if you're in a position in your life where it could interfere or if it could cause whatever, just know that it might be more than you bargain for at times. You know, that's all. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, there's fear, obviously. There's a lot of fear there, right? Like my family, my my dad, my my sisters, nope, don't want to hear. They think I'm dealing with demons, right? Yeah. You know, they're, they're very religious, but, uh, you know, it, it's, I, I couldn't convince them, what, regardless of what I put in front of them, that, um, no, it's actually quite the opposite. They, they, they hide from evil themselves, and they are a very spiritual, compassionate, loving people. Um, they hold honesty in high regard. Yeah, you know, I've, uh, you learn these things as you you go through, uh, um, you know, developing a relationship with them, right? And uh, you know, and still after ten years, I I barely had a glimpse. You know, barely had a glimpse. You know, people think, oh, where's the video footage? You should have all kinds of it. No, man. Yeah. The, no, no. You know, there's there's some stuff that uh, is not put out there that uh, for good reason. You know certain things uh, show in person i have no problem but um but uh, they give certain gifts at times and it's you have to question and you, you actually you know i i respect enough to ask them say you know am i allowed to show this because i the last thing i want to do is piss them off and yeah um you know i've never been hurt except for one time being clubbed in the head with a stick you know, uh, blowing up a air mattress in my tent, but there was no intention to harm me there, right? He's just a big guy, and it doesn't take much to, you know, to hurt somebody, I guess. But um, they're they're very uh, very, you know, they're they're compassionate people. You know, they're good people. They they're very adamant about love and and being happy, and um, they're very happy people. You know, and they're very excited to to uh, connect with humans. They want to connect with humans. This is what's happening, right? They're, um, and they don't they don't judge us by our past, or um, they they select those that they feel are, I guess, worthy of um, you know contact with them, right? Um, you know, I'm you know I, I'm not I'm no perfect guy, that's for sure. I've I was a little shit growing up, you know. I've, <laughs> lots of trouble in my past so but hey we all we all grow and evolve and um you know you're just always trying to be better and and, and evolve and, and keep growing throughout your life and and now we have this and it's just it's it's an absolutely in, incredible um thing to to witness and and, and know that we have in our forests uh, it, it really it, it uh, changes our whole perspective on reality and, and gives hope and and um, it, it shows that there there truly is magic in this world. So. Yeah, you know that's really well put because once you know, you can't not know, and then you know it, to deny it is it's troubling. You know, it, it's it's more troubling than if uh, you're trying to consider that truth. And once you know it, it's like, well, now I can't unconsider it. And to your point, even talking with Barry, Barry stresses that, that, you know, he, he viscerally got upset when we started talking about Ishagi when he wasn't ready because he knows that Ishagi is, is gone. And that was like a dear, dear friend to him. And he, he said that, he said, look, I want you to keep this on camera. You can't just roll up on here and start talking about that. You got to let me get prepared for it. He He's getting upset talking about it but yeah, I it, saw it, that. yeah like he's it's like this is a benevolent person this he he was a, a very kind-hearted person you know and and we had this connection you know and and uh it, it's it's almost like someone that touched you in a way you never been touched that that isn't around anymore you don't just throw it around like it was an animal or something that used to come around a bear that used to we used to feed and you know kind of became like a dog and then someone you know doesn't come around anymore it's not like that at all um, but man, this is, this has been great. I'm at my, I'm in Arizona for your viewers. I live in Florida, but I'm in Arizona celebrating my mom's 90th birthday. And, uh, 
There's happy, a, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, and there, there's a crowd emerging outside these doors that I'm afraid uh, it's my family. They may bust in the doors at any moment. So I Yeah, it's I'll, okay. We've been on an hour and a half. So we'll, uh, is there any anything that you'd like to, uh, you know, people can contact you or anything you'd like to, to share that way, that way, you know? Sure, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, if you want, it's a uh, we uh, did get the film we're referencing and the experiences. It's called Sitonga, uh, Bigfoot Spirits and Faith. It's C I apostrophe T O N G A, which is their name, their native name for these these the Sasquatch. And it's on Amazon Video, Amazon Prime Video. Uh, what we I wanted to get up there for free, but Amazon it doesn't work like that with film distribution. I'm, you know, I'm learning all that. So they they're going to charge you a buck ninety nine for it, and uh, but once we get enough views, then we can switch it over to being free. I guess after a certain amount of views, so that's the goal. But if you want, check it out, leave a review. Uh, there's um, uh, yeah, there's I think there may be on my um on the I the, my I I did the IMBD page you know what i mean to yeah, uh, yeah for that if you go on look me up on that page james brost i have like my cell phone number you guys can text if someone wants to text me hey i'm in florida this is going on, whatever feel free man i'm an open book it's like my cell phone number i could care less just text me if you want to talk about an experience or have someone check it out or whatever just just to talk i'm i'm always open cool well i i appreciate the talk james you know it was um it was great to to uh finally do this again uh, even though it's a little bit switched although you know it's all it's all good man and uh you know i i hope that you and and your your crew and your friends they all get to uh, experience this stuff you know that you guys all get to really get some really good you know amazing experiences because i i know when you you just keep persisting and pursuing this that it does happen. And, and from what you've told me, you know, just that dream uh, and what went on there. Um, so you're, you're being watched. <laughs> you and, are. And I, and I thank you for that. And I, I feel like uh, it's almost like, okay, well, we'll let you shut down for a while, but Hey man, you, you know, the truth, you know, we we like you. So we're waiting. It kind of feels like that. You know, and and uh, so I'm sure uh, I'm sure this isn't the last. We'll talk about some of some of my adventures, and at some point, I'd, I'd I I want to get up to Canada. You know, grab a cup of coffee with you at some point, and and then on the other side of it, I'm going to get to Alaska because I still have some family up there, and uh, check that out there too. Because look, as you know, I it doesn't really matter where you are, and even if it's they know, and yep. I think Neff would know. And I think in Alaska, there's a spot that I want to go that I think they would know. And so uh, I, before, uh, before it's all said and done, those are some things I'd like to check out, man, for real. And I, I think too, once you connect to them, I, I, I think it doesn't matter where you go. Yeah. I think you're good. You know, there might be some out there that uh, depending on where you are, maybe some remote region that, who knows but uh the the places that where there's you know populated where they're closer to humans i think uh we're all good to go and um like i said once you connect with them you know you're i think you're okay you know they all it seems that they all know i i have activity that goes on here too at home so trying to develop that but uh it's been very slow but they're there so. they're there Anyways, all right, James. So it was, uh, it was great having a talk with you, man. I really appreciate that. And have an awesome night. And you know, say say happy birthday for me. And uh, I wish you and your family well. I wish you all the best, my friend. I really appreciate it. And keep keep up uh, keep up the good fight, my brother. Definitely. Okay. All right. Yeah, Thanks man. for showing up, everybody. Um, have a good night. All right. Peace. Later.